Hey, what's up, guys? Going to be showing you a, a latest and greatest preview or overview of the Pure Shamu version 3.97. Now, previously, I reviewed the 3.8 version, and there's been a couple updates since this and some really nice improvements. Now, just a quick note I want to explain if you haven't watched my previous video. Uh, there, there is no OTA update process with this ROM uh, right now. I don't know if that's going to be um, updated in the future or not, so you will have to dirty flash each update, or you will have to wipe and flash accordingly. But a good thing to note is that there isn't very, uh, or in many instability issues with this ROM specifically. It's very stable. Uh, the only reason you would have to flash is most likely to uh, check out one of the newer updates or newer features if they in, uh, integrate anything else, which I'm sure they will because there's a lot of great new things on this version right now. But uh, just be aware that you don't have to flash it all the time with each update unless you are looking to fix something accordingly that they specifically fix. But very, very stable ROM. And one of the great things about Pure Shamu is that uh, with most other ROMs, you have to go through each uh, setting submenu and you'll have to go hunt and find uh, where all the specific stuff is. But with Pure Shamu, you have a Pure Settings folder or menu and you can go in here and they have everything you could possibly change on this ROM in this menu. So that's very, very easily, very simplified. And I like that uh, a lot about this ROM. Uh, but one of the first things you're going to notice is the status bar uh, sub menu. And up here you have the battery status style, which is the icon battery style. You can change it to a portrait or landscape defaulted icon. You can change it to a circle, which you can see currently, or just a text base, or you can hide it all together. And then you can go even further and set up the uh, battery percentage indicator to be hidden put it within the icon itself or next to the icon by the date or time. You can actually adjust the brightness control by enabling or disabling it and going from left or right on the top there to adjust the brightness on the display. They have a clock and date submenu, and you can go in here and disable the clock completely or enable it. You can change up the color if you want to accordingly. And now they have a feature where you can adjust the font. You can make it bold, uh, you can make it condensed, light, italic, you know, you can go through the rundown there, but I really like the resurrection type font setting. It's kind of like a bold italic. It looks really nice in my opinion. Now you can also adjust the alignment from right or center. Some of the ROMs allow you to go to the left, uh, but this ROM does not, not a big deal. You can put AMs or PMs on there and you can adjust from smaller normal font sizes and you can put at the actual date and you can go to a normal or small font on that as well and you can actually adjust the lower uppercase abilities on that style and you can go in here and adjust the format accordingly through the options available or even create a custom Java format string if you want to go in and put something in yourself. So some very, very nice features and settings in the date and clock menu. You also have the ability to do a quick pull down. And what this means is, you know, if you swipe over from the right, you'll get the quick toggles to come all the way down or if you just go from the left, it will just show your notifications. And that is actually fixed. The last version I used, which was 3.8, uh, gave me some issues, but it is now fully functional. And it's a great feature to have. You also have the ability to enable or disable your notification tickers and counts. You also have double tap to sleep. And if you double tap basically on the status bar at the top, it will put the phone to sleep. Now, if you double tap anywhere on the screen while it is asleep, it will in fact awake. This works 100% and is compatible with the Nexus 6 and this ROM specifically. So it's a very nice integrated feature. They also put in a very new addition and I love this. It's the net notification drawer. And what you can do is you can drag your tiles around and set them based on priority and usage. This is a really, really great feature. Um, I really like it and I like the fact that they added it since my last uh, update. And you can go in here and throw in things you use or remove things that you use and uh, it will update in real time accordingly. You can even set up the brightness slider. If you use the brightness a lot, you can, you know, turn it on or disable it if you don't use it or adjust your screen brightness very often. That is all done in real time. Very nice feature. And you can also disable that, you know, where it highlights the two on the top. So if you're not using two specifically or you don't like it taking up all that extra space, you can in fact disable that and it will kind of, uh, give you a little bit less real estate usage taken up there and it will, you know, make it less obvious on which ones are up at the top, but very, very cool feature integrated recently. You also have the ability to disable the traffic monitor or enable it if you want to and change up the colors specifically. 
You can even adjust the display units in bits or bytes. You can go in and update the interval process from 500 milliseconds all the way up to 2000. And you can adjust the auto hide ability based on an activity thresholds. And you can set that up accordingly. So some very nice specific features there with the data control on the traffic monitor. Another big feature that they included was the portrait nav bar and landscape nav bar settings. So if you don't use the nav bar, you can disable it accordingly based on portrait or landscape mode. And that's pretty, pretty cool. You can also go in here and go into advanced settings and adjust the actual height of the bar itself. So that's also pretty cool. It's now a percentage value instead of just a, you know, basic DP value. You can also adjust the button long press and you can also adjust the landscape as the same as the bar height on the portrait mode, which I just showed. You also have some advanced settings down here with the allow legacy menu keys. You can put in extra IME buttons, which includes a switch that changes the layout to keyboard arrows and the AOSP keyboard switcher. And you can even go in here and kind of put more nav bar buttons in if you want, or layouts, kind of like if you have, um, the dock on a custom launcher you can put more icons and slide through different pages on a dock same same basic concept you know you can go in here and, and add some more navigation buttons if you want to up down left right as you can see which is you know pretty interesting you can add more stuff specifically if you want to and uh another thing to mention is they have the editor in the navbar thing and you can actually change up the priority or the positioning of your back home and recents so if you're more used to a Samsung device, you can swap that back button over there to the right instead. So that's pretty cool that it is real time. Another thing to note is you can actually hit this plus up here and it will actually give you another button you can add and you can go in there and set it up specifically. And uh, if you don't want it and you want to get rid of it, you just swipe it over and that's basically the same as deleting. Um, you can also adjust the short and long action and double tap actions. You just go in here and press them and then you can put it you know, whatever you want accordingly. And even cooler is you can actually put in a custom icon. So if you don't like those Olipop navigation bar icons, you can go in there and pretty much put it in anything you want. So super customizable navigation bar options now in pure Shamu, which is really awesome. Uh, definitely going to be looking into that some more in customization. Now you have the volume rocker sub menu here which basically gives you playback control. If your device is turned off, you can use the volume rockers to seek music tracks. Uh, you can use the volume rockers to wake the device if you want to, instead of just the power button. You can turn off that annoying uh, uh, volume rocker sound, you know, when you're adjusting your volumes, the little beeping noise, you can disable or enable that accordingly. And in the system settings, you can enable that advanced reboot function. So if you go in here and you do reboot, you'll now get that advanced option list which is very, very nice. And you also get the ability to disable or enable that search bar. So if you go in your recent, you'll notice that search bar at the top is no longer there and you can enable or disable that accordingly. As you can see in real time, very, very nice. I leave mine off. You can also change up your head up notifications. A lot of people don't like um, having the notifications pop up while they're watching uh, media, streaming media, playing games, or what have you, so that you do have the ability to disable that completely with the latest version of Pure Shamu. So that's very nice for people that find that annoying. You also have the App Manage, which enables application management in the notification area and recent app lists. You can enable or disable that. Um, the Show Power button, I think this requires a soft reboot, but you have the ability to set, tap, and long press actions and you can screen off power menu or power menu screen off, or you can just disable it accordingly. Um, I'm not sure if that will require a soft reboot or not. I haven't tried that out too much, but it is in there if you want that. And then last but not least, you have your privacy guard where you can go in and set which specific apps you do not want accessing your personal data. So some very, very great features in Pure Shamu, some very nice additions uh, from the previous 3.8 that I tried out. And this thing is, like I've always said, completely stable. I get the best battery results off this ROM. Um, it does run a stock kernel. I don't have anything set up on here right now, like a lean kernel or anything specifically. But the battery life is phenomenal on Pure Shamu. It always has been. Um, one of the ROMs I don't like currently is Um It just sucks up the, the life out of my battery for some reason. And it even feels a lot warmer when I'm holding the Nexus for some reason. 
you know, because it's using more battery for, I, I, I don't know why, but uh, I just noticed that. But with this ROM, it's very stable. Uh, it runs my AT&T LTE fine, no issues whatsoever. If you have Verizon, T-Mobile, or Sprint, I cannot comment on those carriers because uh, I do not use them. But I'm pretty sure there's no issues unless you're using Verizon. There might be some that people are mentioning. You'll have to go onto the XDA forums and check that out accordingly. But very great ROM, very stable. Love the fact that all the settings are in one menu, pure settings. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's Pure Shamu 3.97 in a nutshell. I can definitely recommend it as one of the best ROMs out there. And the support has been phenomenal. And the additional features are always implemented. And it continues to grow. Till next time, guys. Peace.